have to come into your presence to draw from your bounty. We ask that you stretch forth your hand over every life and do us good and let your name be glorified in Jesus name. You may be seated. God bless you. And those of you outside, if you can hear my voice, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Those of you online, you are a part of what is happening here. Heaven is excited at this night. And the hand of God will be stretched in such a way that it will do away with your infirmities. Turn your Bible to the book of Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts chapter 1. We'll do Bible study for a few minutes. Then we'll spend some time to pray. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after that through the Holy Ghost he had given commandments unto his apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart out of Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father, which saith ye, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they were therefore come together, they asked him, saying, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. It was like a lift. You know, the Bible, Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus and he said, No man has ever ascended into heaven at any time. No man. And when you hear that statement, you will be quick to challenge it by saying, But Elijah was taken into heaven by chariots of fire. Hallelujah. You know that in the case of Elijah, he did not go to heaven at will. There was a machinery, a transport system that came to pick him. But Jesus, when he finished his presentation, he decided to, by himself. No man ever did that. It's only the Son of Man, even Jesus Christ. Now the reason for which Jesus came in the book of Acts chapter 1 where we read was that after that he had suffered and satisfied the claims of divine justice by the kind of death that he died he paid the price for the penalty that was bequeathed on humankind on the basis of the first rebellion which was found in Adam and when he did that he had reconciled God to man and the quarrel between God and man was satisfied in his death because the provision for provision of the justice system of heaven concerning humankind 
in the rebellion of adam was that the day that you eat of this fruit you shall surely die so death was the sentence death was the consequence death was supposed to follow that rebellion and jesus in his all-inclusive death had satisfied the claims of divine justice making it possible for god to walk with man again now when he finished his assignment he ascended into heaven but he could not remain in heaven because there was a challenge upon the face of the earth and because of that he had to return back to earth and the space in which he returned was 40 days his 40 day mission was to provide capacity building for the functionaries of the kingdom that will be holding the fourth here on earth because while he was ascending into heaven he noticed that there was an insufficiency in terms of capacity to prosecute the kingdom enterprise and to extend the frontiers of the kingdom and so when he went to heaven he had to take permission to be away from heaven for 40 days so that in the which period he could provide capacity building the subject of the seminar that jesus did for 40 days was not on the subject of prosperity the subject of the seminar that jesus did for 40 days was not on breakthrough the subject of the seminar that jesus did on for 40 days was not jehovah sharp sharp the subject was about things pertaining to the kingdom of god hallelujah that you don't know god if you don't know that he's a king he happens not to be a prime minister he is not a president he is a king a monarch and from the book of genesis to the book of revelation what god is doing is ruling he's operating a kingdom salvation was the entry point that god afforded us to become functionaries in the kingdom the goal of salvation is not salvation the goal of salvation is a remedial initiative to bring us into kingdom participation now it is needful for us to establish what the goal of the gospel is why did jesus save us because if the goal of the uh, initiative of jesus is salvation then the day we give our lives to christ we should be raptured into heaven because god's purposes have climaxed in our lives in the book of genesis you will notice that god was offering man a kingdom he was not offering man salvation and salvation is our entry point into the kingdom hallelujah and it happens to be that this kingdom is in the spirit so it is the personality of the spirit of god that comes to tabernacle our heart on the basis of our regeneration that becomes our access point in participating in this kingdom if god wants to conquer a land what he does is that he conquers the hearts of the men in that land and when they begin to operate as kingdom agents he uses them through his spirit uh, unveiling his policies for that land and then they become his foot soldiers by which the intentions of god are achieved upon the face of the earth hallelujah he conquers kings he conquers thrones he conquers territories by conquering the hearts of men and that's god's style and what is at work in your heart in the person of the holy ghost that tabernacles your heart is the kingdom of god that is at work in your heart it is from that platform of the holy spirit actively functioning upon your heart that you can receive understanding of the policy direction of heaven as touching your life as an individual as touching your territory in which you dwell and the labors of heaven that should um, be brought into your territory in order to establish the name of god in that landscape the reason for which we live is to become kingdom functionaries within our territories and it happens to be that god does not rule 
by brute strength he rules by decrees it was jesus that said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that what proceeds out of what the mouth of god that's how he rules it means that if god should speak to you he has animated you he has engaged you he has activated you for an activity if we go back into all of your diaries and check the thing god told you in the last 13 years last 24 years last 15 years and if those things are not have not generated an activity in your life it means that you are a false participant in the kingdom it means your life is not responsive to the king it means you have rejected the rule of the king in your life it is such a man that is owing taxes owing payments owing nepa bills owing water rates one of the things that happened to him is that nepa comes and disconnects him it means even though even though he's entitled to electricity because he's not a responsible citizen it is in the interest of the country for him to be in blackout. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, my. How many of you have a problem hearing God? It's difficult. You don't know the voice of God yet. You are trying to. Oh, you, you lie in Kaduna. Okay, let's move. <laughs> the last time you heard God clearly was the last time you obeyed him. If not, you have a hearing problem from that point henceforth man this creature called man this creature called humankind by design was not ordained to live by bread alone that's jesus by design that's your design man jesus used that temptation as an opportunity to address humankind and what he said about humankind was that you were not designed to live by bread alone but you were designed to be active animated activated by what the utterances that proceed out of the mouth of god you think that the climax of your life is to walk in zenith bank that's your job there's a risk difference between your job and your work i went to preach in lagos because in lagos everybody believes that god is their their job I wake up by 5 a.m in the morning they don't even see their children they hop into the vehicle and drive down in the hold up and say oh what a bad day then six o'clock everybody's driving down again if you go to orile by seven orile hey, you will see people move, move. you know what i stayed in lagos long enough to know, to know they were not going anywhere <laughs> Hurrah, Messiah. daniel was one of the functionaries that was employed in the ministry of wisdom in babylon because the way babylon advanced was consistent to the wisdom department and in that department they had all forms all layers all access points into the supernatural realm the chaldeans were there with their magic the astrologers were there stargazers they were present there the diviners that could divine with ogugu divine with water spirits the elementals that could read the weather and understand what the spirits that the spirits are angry and when they conquered israel they saw that there was another type of priesthood there and they brought daniel shadrach meshach and abednego and they represented that priesthood in the ministry of wisdom that was how king nebuchadnezzar was able to pioneer the concept of globalization hallelujah daniel are you still with me daniel when he was assigned his duty he decided not to take off his furniture and he decided to pitch his office by the gate of the land now that man was given a job but he ended up doing work now there's a difference between your job and your work don't think there's eternal life in zenith bank 
you might spend all your life there and forget about what proceeded out of the mouth of God concerning you. You are a wretched personality in the kingdom. And when ranking is distributed, you will find out that you will be an usher. May the Lord give you understanding. Many people have wasted their lives in the corridor of secular jobs. And I'm telling you as a man that is in secular job. But the secular platforms provided us an opportunity to, it was a mission field to do the work of God. Yes, we, we got the job and we give to Caesar what is Caesar. But on Caesar's platform we had the liberty to do other things because man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god if all you do is balance checks and raise ledgers and payments and all of that for all 35 years of your service among men you are most miserable you have denied your origin you existed as a seed of eternity in the aquarium of god before you were formed in your mother's womb man jesus said shall not live by bread alone so when jesus came to conduct a seminar to empower the first set of apostles to do kingdom business the title of this capacity building program was what things pertaining to the kingdom of god no subject captures the spirit and the body of the bible as much as that caption. Somebody in the congregation is talking to me. He said, well, my pastor is a prosperity preacher. Prosperity does not exist in limbo. Prosperity does not exist as an isolated reality. It is a part of the kingdom. Are you here? And so Jesus said, seek ye first. The kingdom of God. That's the only time in the entire Bible that Jesus decided to introduce the word first for the purpose of prioritizing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and seek also to be right with the laws of that kingdom. And if you are such a personality, uh, then the things that the Gentiles seek, namely money and material, they will navigate in your direction. And I'm a physical proof that that scripture is true. Before this service ends now, this one now. If I switch on my phone, people would have sown seed into my account. I'm so sure. It, is, it has been constant for five years. So if I say it, I'm sure that that pattern has come to stay. I, I get busy with the kingdom. I get busy with aligning myself with the laws of that, of that, of that nation. And I do that as my preoccupation. I can do that in Zenith Bank. I can do that. When I come to Zenith Bank, they say, okay, your assignment is to balance the ledger. Hallelujah. I will do that. And in addition to that, they didn't say I should not do kingdom matter there. Are there sick people in the bank? Are there people that need salvation in the bank? Are there oppressed people, demonized people in the bank? It's a platform. Zenith Bank is a platform. Access Bank is a platform. You will find out that there are more demons in the corporate world than in the river in your village. <laughs> I have seen demonic miracles before. You come for crusades, you think miracles are only divine. I've seen a, an able-bodied man that came to walk, sat on his seat and he became crippled. That's a miracle. That is a miracle. So we have the sons of darkness doing demonic miracles in the corridors of secular occupation. But the kingdom men, come, they believe that their Christianity is confined to a structure, an auditorium, where they sing hymns. The devil dealt with us. And that's why Jesus, when he had 40 days to deliver, the subject was what? I know the reason why you can't say it freely because there is a challenge. Your life is not is not best described by that caption. 
things pertaining to what? The kingdom of God. I remember when I was still in Lagos, I was praying in tongues and I got to the office and the cleaner came to clean. And I was praying in tongues and she was cleaning. Praying in tongues, she was cleaning. And when she passed my face, I saw that there were two drums and blood was being, had blood was being drained into drums. And I said, hey woman, you are losing blood, ba? He said, yes, how did I know? I said, I'm seeing it. Your blood is being drained into a drum. And she shouted. I said, no, it's not a shouting issue. <laughs> it's not about shouting. We conducted deliverance in the office. No, but no other office knows that such a thing happened. We conducted it there. I, I'm not being paid to conduct deliverance. But that's the job for my God. I'm dispatched to do that kind of business. Hallelujah. You came to Enshala. I came to also cast out devils. If, when you become a kingdom man, any space you find yourself is a platform. It's a platform. And so Jesus had to straighten all the gray areas about uh, the engagements in the enterprise of God's kingdom and what it was all about. And that was what the seminar was all about. But the point is this. In order for you to be admitted, like if you are going to be admitted into the university, you must have O level, your O level requirements. You must have, if it's a, a science course, you need to have chemistry as a credit. You need to have mathematics as a credit. You need to have physics as a credit. And then you can pick any other course here and there. And at the end of the day, you also need English as a credit. Then you'll be admitted. There are some forms of requirements that are necessary for you to be admitted into an academic uh, environment, an ivory tower. And in the case of Jesus also, this seminar he came to do is you need to qualify in order for you to be admitted. Now those guys that Jesus wanted to educate in the seminar, there was something he had to do to them. Are you here? Can you give me verse 2 of Acts chapter 1? Verse 2. Oh, you are slow. He said, until the day the former treatise O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that through the Holy Ghost he had given commandments unto his apostles whom he had chosen. You see, these apostles, who chose them? Now, so these guys were people that Jesus had chosen. The next verse, which is verse 3, now shows us what you need to have, the credential that you need to have in order for him to admit you into the course. The Bible said, to whom also? To, why also? The ones, he did not only choose them. But after choosing them, because of this seminar, he also showed himself alive to them. I know you are chosen. I know you have a calling. I know you have something moving on your life. And you have always believed that the hand of God is strong upon you. That's not sufficient. If you are going to do kingdom business, if the subject matter is about the kingdom, then Jesus must of necessity show himself alive to you. And this is not theologically, not by doctrine, not by going to Bible school, not by attending Bible study. The way he showed himself alive to these people was by infallible proofs, by encounter. The challenge with our generation is that so many people are preaching the gospel that have not yet contacted the reality of Christ. Those kind of people with dark king cancer, the little light you have inside, if you submit it under such a ministry, it will quench it. I stayed in Lagos for six years and I saw the kind of Christianity that was being conducted in Lagos. Because uh, for many years I was looking for a local assembly to be part of. Most of the times our duty for the government was offshore. Right? 
and you can be doing that thing for three weeks, one month without attending church. So when you come back and you want to attend church, it's not as a religious function, but you want life. Then I realized that Lagos Church was about ties and, and bow ties and, uh, and slick suits and oh, blending of colors and uh, amen. And it was clear that the people that re represent the name of God had not, don't know they live in Jesus. Because the only merchandise that we have as the apostolic church is called life. The life of God. Jesus died and all of his virtue was squeezed out as the content of the church. The life of Jesus is what we live on in the body of Christ. And if by any means a generation comes that cannot deliver that life, then among all men, we are most miserable. And I saw people blending colors. I saw all kinds of gadgets and all kinds of things. But life was lacking. And that was a great show. And it, I call it show business. And I, we moved to Lekki. They said they had raised a, a, a prime worship center in that place. And I said, all right, let's go check it out. And when we got there, oh my God. The place was fully air conditioned and i was looking for the vent where the air conditioning was coming from it took me a long time jesus the place was like a sanctuary and there was a big cross on the pulpit it looked the you know this is a cathedral but jesus was not inside it was a waste of resources and a waste of life all those people sitting there, there were about 10,000 that day. Their lives were wasted that morning. Because the only merchandise that the church is supposed to carry, which is the life of Jesus, was not present. The man that was speaking was an orator. But in his words, there was a vital, fatal lack. And that lack was the proof that he had seen the risen Christ. You see, the, that you saw Jesus on the cross doesn't make you a New Testament Christian. There is one Jesus that rose from the dead. If you, if you encounter that one, you will be saved. Oh. If you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and confess with your mouth that God has raised him from the dead. That's, if, you, if you see, ever see, the Jesus that raised, was raised from the dead, you will not remain the way you are. Something will crack in your life permanently. So what we do is religion. We know how to say the right words because we attended Bible school and theological colleges. But there is something missing. It is not about the words. There is a life that you accompany it. Those words are supposed to be a container that conveys a certain kind of life that you cannot find in the world of men. For two hours we were in that beautiful place it was just like a beautiful gate that was an accommodation for crippled people. Because all I could see were men with crutches that didn't know God. And everybody came and they were excited by the blending of colors. I was coming from offshore. I needed life because I don't know when next I will attend church. Some other people came because, oh my, yeah, there's, there's something happening. I was looking for life. And in all the things that happened, life did not find expression. It will be difficult for someone to be born again in that service. For the spirit that convicts the heart was nowhere to be found. So in this attempt of Jesus, it was an opportunity to rescue the faith and to put it in perspective. He had to do a seminar. And in order for you to be admitted into the seminar, you must have seen him alive. Do you know him that lives? Do you, if, you have, if you know this one, this risen Christ, if you know him, you will have power to change your world. And so there was no need for you to be part of the seminar to go out with head knowledge if you don't know that the one that is teaching is living. Hallelujah. Okay. My um, burden for the night is to show us what Jesus taught them in the seminar for 40 days. Hallelujah. 
And meanwhile, these are the grand works of true apostolic ministry. You must have heard me say that the burden we have is for the rebirth of apostolic Christianity. That's our call as a ministry. All right? And our test book in this call is the book of Acts of the Apostles. We must be masters of that book. Because in our day, God will replay this book in a higher measure of excellence as he restores the revival, which is the emblem of our identity in the spirit as a corporate persona. As he restores that revival into the land, things similar to what you have seen in the book of Acts of the Apostles will begin to happen again. Faceless, nameless people that are carriers of the spirit of life will begin to do supernatural things and the attention of a godless generation will be caught by men that know the Christ that is alive. My question is, does, is he living in your assembly? Or you hear a history about Jesus. The history of Jesus has no saving power. We come from offshore labors with our jungle boots, with our, sorry, safety boots, looking for life. And I transversed Lagos and I discovered that if something doesn't happen to Lagos, Christianity would die in natural death. I knew that in that thing that we were doing in the name of church in Lagos, we have become used to going through the motion. And we have become used to operating in lifeless arenas because we have departed from the core values that Jesus taught when he organized his kingdom seminar. And that's why we want to go back in our Bible study to find out what were the things that Jesus emphasized to the first set of apostles that led to the great um, revival that began. An avalanche broke out and they were able to take Jerusalem. You see, you don't make converts from Jews. Jews are the people that have the most established religion. It's so old. And uh, if you want to preach to a Jew and you tell the Jew you have a revelation, he will not accept it. Because a Jew will tell you that when God spoke to them, he spoke to them in a group. And what he told them in a group is superior to what you heard in your closet. How do you make a convert out of a Jew? Meanwhile, Jesus said the glory of the kingdom has been designed in a certain progression. That the gospel must be preached first in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a bad place to start this business. I would have suggested Judea. Judea, the religious inclination of Judea was weak. They can colonize the place. But Jesus didn't just want glory. But he wanted glory to manifest in a certain way. And that was why he gave them the progression of how this civilization should move and migrate in the earth until he conquers the entire globe. He said, you start from Jerusalem. Now, so in your own Jerusalem, is there proof that there is a Christian in your Jerusalem? I'm, your Jerusalem I'm talking about is your family. Is there proof that you are a Christian? If there's no proof that I, you are a Christian, it means you have not met the living Jesus. Religion is cheap. But Jesus, in order for you to be part of apostolic labels, must take you to a, the surgical room and show himself what? Alive to you. Don't claim that you want to take nations. One preacher ran to my father in the law and said, God told me that I'm going to the United States of America. And Papa said, a lizard in Nigeria will not become an alligator in the United States of America. You have done nothing in your Jerusalem and you believe that when you arrive in Gambia, there will be fire. You are, you are in a comic book. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, you start from Jerusalem. If it is true that you have contacted what I gave you and you are using the tools of apostolic governors, then the most unlikely places can be colonized. Hallelujah. What is the most difficult part place in Nigeria? What is the most difficult Please help me. What's the most? Uh, 
Richard, where are you from? Where are you? In fact, I, I was trying to ask you that. Where are you from in, in this country? Abia State. Okay. Umahia. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, see, it doesn't matter the location. If you know what Jesus taught, if you know what he taught in that seminar, and we follow what he taught in the seminar, we should be able to take on any locality that we find ourselves. So, in the eyes of Jesus, no locality is too strong that will not respond to the apostolic tool. Hallelujah. When Jesus began to teach them, the lecture became so hot that they requested for a break to go and think on it. How do I know this? In verse 6, do you have verse 6? Oh. Is that the fastest you can be? We, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you have you know him alive. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you know him alive, then we <laughs> now. These guys went on break because the Bible says in verse 6, when they were therefore come together, they asked for, for a break. I said, Kai, wait. Let's, let's spend some time. So he gave them time. When they now spent the time, they came back. And all of them came with one question. The whole class, they had discussed during break. And they came back with that, with one question. They said, okay, the subject of the seminar is the kingdom of God. And guess the kind of fake question that they asked. A question that was not related to the subject of the teaching. He said, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom unto Israel? That means they did not understand Jesus' lecture. Because Jesus was talking about the kingdom of heaven, how it's going to manifest and dominate the earth. And they were asking kingdom of Israel, a political question. He was teaching them about a spiritual thing their question was about what? Who will rule Nigeria in the next uh, election? I was expecting Jesus to rebuke them sharply for that level of laxity that made them not to catch the spirit of what he was emphasizing. But Jesus did not rebuke. Check his response. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has put in his own power there are two words there i need to draw your attention to because in greek language there are four words for time in greek language there are two words for another in greek language there are yes two two words for another four words for power two words for time so the, the two words for time were used here. And according to this, he said, it's not for you to know the kairos or the chronos which God has put his, in all, his own authority. That word there is authority. It means that there is, I hope you know what kairos means. It means opportune time. Chronos means chronological time. Okay, that scripture, you remember it? Genesis chapter 2. 8 verse 22 as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest shall not see that seed time are you with me seed time how many of you have ever planted corn before you planted maize how how long does it take to become mature four months okay somebody suggesting four months let's adopt four months if you cultivate on the ground and you take corn and you plant, even if you are hungry after two weeks and you go to the place with hunger, it will not deliver harvest. You know what? Because that is the chronological time. The harvest time, which is the opportune time, is when you can get from your investment. So the Greeks decided to separate chronological time from harvest time. Harvest time is the opportune time. Everything that you are doing in the chronological time is towards a season called the harvest time. Meanwhile, according to the scriptures, demons will not 
will not be attracted to you during the chronological time. Demons will only show up during the harvest time. Mm. Do you still remember that scripture? It says, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. That word time there is kairos. Redeeming the kairos. Why? Because the days, the days around the kairos are evil. Jesus said, no, don't be moving around. Just stay where I want you to stay. Jesus said, it is not for you to know the opportune times and the chronological times which are set in God's power. This scripture means God has his own calendar that is held under his own authority, which is different from your human calendar. That was what Jesus was saying in the book of Luke when he says, Say ye not four months and then the heavens. That is Kronos and Kairos. Are you there? But Jesus now said, Look, lift up your eyes. That means forsake your own calendar. Lift up your eyes to the divine calendar. And if you see it, you will discover that the fields are already white. According to God's calendar, it is Kairos time. And we are about to lose the harvest. Meanwhile, in your own calendar, is remaining what? Oh, you are not with me. Okay, let me, because you are not following, we'll leave that point. There is something about timing in kingdom labor. Timing. Two thousand and nine was the first time I went abroad, and in my hotel room, when I was praying, that was the first time I saw Jesus live. And Jesus said, "The youth, the youth, the youth." He said it four times. The youth. He said, use your power of sight to deliver them from destruction and I will open the gates of nations to you. Jesus. I'm not talking about a vision. I'm saying I saw the living Jesus in my hotel room. I was in the restaurant in the hotel and I asked them to bring me food. And all the, 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 the food that they brought was written in Indian language. So I now chose one. <laughs> and when they brought the menu, it was rice, but that rice was green, green color. And I thought that it would be as sweet as it looked. And when I took, because I was hungry like a horse. When I took one goal, it was bitter. So I, I poured it out. I said, hey, what's, what's, what's this thing? Meanwhile, the guy doesn't understand English. Me, I don't understand his own language. I said, hey! <laughs> so he got my language. And he said, that that thing is drug. That if I eat it, it contains all the minerals. It contains... I said, no, I'm not sick. I'm not looking for drug. What I asked for is food. So me and him were there like the Tower of Babel. And when the communication was not producing any results, I went to my room. I didn't know that Jesus was the one that frustrated that food. He, he was in the room with him. And the moment I entered, I saw him. <laughs> so I knelt down. He said the youth four times. He said, use your power of sight. To deliver them from destruction. And I will open the gates of nations to you. Do you realize that Jesus did not say how long it will take? <laughs> the first thing you need to know about kingdom things. Is that they run on the scale of the calendar that is held under God's authority. I know you don't understand that. Okay, I stop. Because you already understand what I'm trying to say, I will stop. There is a calendar. 
So Jesus said, I should focus on the youth. It is after that time I started hopping from campus to campus because Jesus had given me an instruction. Many senior ministers called me and said, this kind of ministry you are doing is not lucrative. If you do it into old age, you will know you failed. Because it is not 